I know you said CEO. One day I am going to be the CEO. Um, right now I'm just a subject matter expert, but I think someone earlier said only 13% of women are CEOs of ed tech companies. And I really want to thank everyone um, in the room, um, Marilyn, for inviting us. Um, tough acts to follow. Uh, for sure. Uh, this is Charlene Davies. She's an executive account manager uh, for our enterprise teams. And we're just thrilled to be here. We're both former educators. Um, that's always been in my heart. Lisa, thanks for asking about that why. It really did make me reflect. Um, Mrs. Butler was my why. She inspired me to be a teacher when I was in first grade. And my dad brought home a Tandy computer in, when I was in fourth grade. And Mrs. Butler gave me old workbooks to bring home. And I started my own school in my basement for my neighborhood. Um, remember the printers? We had to put them on spools, and it was that paper. And I would make worksheets, and I would print them out. And technology has always been my passion. Ever since then, I was addicted to technology and education. And one of the biggest things for me is access. Um, I definitely think that access is the most important thing, and the ability to provide access to not just our students, but our families. Um, because, you know, before the pandemic, I really do think that we were sending home devices to people who didn't have internet at home. Um, raise your hand if you were one-to-one -one before the pandemic device-wise. Raise your hand if you're one-to-one -one now. Interesting. How many people provided internet access to families at home? Everyone. And to me, that's, that's the game changer in education. To me, that's my Super Bowl. When I was able to provide access to every single, not student, but the family, they're taking that device home to their family. And for some families, that is their device. That's how they can access resources, get telehealth. That's how they can look at, you know, up information on how to access reduce and free lunch. That's how they get access. And that might be their lifeline. And for many families, we discovered that it is. So that was my Super Bowl. I'm like, what am I going to do next? I just won the Super Bowl. I took 10,000 students and teachers from in-person to online in 72 hours. Now what am I going to do? Um, and for me, it was always about now taking that capacity and then building it and trying to help students and teachers nationally. My other passion is just being a teacher. I always loved being a teacher, but I felt like I could no longer make teachers' lives easier through technology in the role I was in. I had done everything that I could for them, but we need to do more. So really, our products, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say this, we always think about the end user in mind, and we always want to make teachers' lives easier, administrators' lives easier, parents' lives easier, and students. And to me, that is what technology is, making people's lives easier. And I think, you know, just five major shifts in education, and you could agree with me or disagree on some of these things, but we now have true one-to-one -one with home internet access. And education is no longer just a day job. I know everyone thinks teachers work from 8 to 3, and that's a complete lie and complete bullshit. We all know that teachers and administrators <laughs> work 24-7. But all of a sudden, there was a higher expectation for our students and for even us to be answering emails. People expect Amazon Prime service all the time. And now it's expected in education. Look at virtual tutoring now. Look at just parents you know, trying to email you every second of the day. Look at all the apps we have to communicate with parents, whether it's Remind or Class Dojo. It's constant communication. Um, and I really think that, you know, we have to start thinking about how we can outsource some of those jobs and, res and responsibilities of us and our teachers to technology to make it easier and more sustainable for our teachers. The other thing we learned is that students can learn online. Is it the best way for every student to learn online? Absolutely not. But there are definitely positives to students learning online and opportunities out there that um, we can definitely harness. Um, and all teachers are technology, technologically proficient now, whether they liked it or not. I mean, we had teachers, raise your hand if you had teachers who were so technology resistant that they became rock stars during the pandemic, right? Let's celebrate all of those teachers and ourselves for doing all of those things. I mean, we had teachers that would never even turn on their computer, and they were creating screencasts, and they were, they were making these crazy things. And let's celebrate everybody for that. So whether they like it or not, everyone in education is techno technologically proficient. And then the other thing is that parents had their first unobstructed view of instruction during the pandemic. They had a window into education that they've never had before, right? Listen, as a parent, I sat next to my kid, and I saw a lot of things I loved and a lot of things that I didn't. But that was the first time I think that parents really got a sense, 
not just of what their students were learning, but also the ways that it was delivered. And parents were shocked about technology. I think they were very interested in all the different platforms that we were using and finally understood how difficult it is for teachers to not only learn new platforms, but then keep 30 kindergartners engaged in a lesson online <laughs> at nine o'clock in the morning. So I think that has definitely changed education. And I really do think that the return on investment of platforms has become more important than ever um, due to all the funding sources, the ESSER, and accountability. So I think for everyone in this room who's an administrator, all of these platforms that we're procuring or buying, how are we going to prove the ROI on that for our students, for our teachers in the next three years? So, you know, in the spirit of connecting and all of the wonderful ideas in here, I don't want to sit up here, we don't want to sit up here and talk for the next 20 minutes. But we really want to talk about how we can maximize instruction in the classroom. And I am not going to sing Hannah Montana, okay? <laughs> but I think it's the best of both worlds. When you can combine in-person learning and technology, you can maximize time in the classroom, and you can actually provide more offline and small group instruction face-to-face -face with teachers. And whether you like Hannah Montana or Ma Miley Bangers, I know you like Miley Bangers better, <laughs> right? Um, we're not gonna sing any of those songs, but I think it is the best of both worlds, and I think now more than ever, we've been equipped with all these tools for our teachers. So, one of the biggest things that I love is blended learning and education. How many people practice blended learning in their schools or aspire to or maybe in personalized learning? I really do think that now that every, tool has, every school has the tools, we can definitely harness it in action. And I love just like this picture here of students learning online, students collaborating, and then the teacher in a small group. And right in the middle on that laptop is GoGuardian teacher. <laughs> Let's pretend. Um, but I really do think it's differentiation, it's, you know, but we also have to balance screen time. I think I'm a huge proponent of offline activities. I think we should be thinking about platform fatigue, healthy use of technology. I know, Marlo, you were really focused on security, but I think we also have to talk about security, but we have to talk about wellness when it comes to screen time. And I think this is the way that we can take the technology that we have and also maximize it and make sure that it's a balanced use of screen time. So, we are going to do some blended learning today because I am also a certified blended learning coach. This is probably not the best room to do it in, but what I wanted to do is I want to make sure that we all have time to talk to each other because I have been learning so much from every conversation, every dinner, every book that people have shared, and I want you to go into a station rotation. So we're gonna go in five minute rotations. The teacher in Charlene and I, we've organized some white chartboard paper over here and there's some markers and we're going to divide you into four groups. And at each station, I want you to go over these questions. Um, you can write, have some choice, you can write on the paper. There's also a link to a Google Doc where you can write down your ideas. And we're gonna crowdsource all this information in a Google Doc and we'll send it to everybody, but I just feel like we're in a room right now with the most amazing rock stars ever, and I want everyone's knowledge. So, I'm going to actually make this group right here, number one, your number one. The middle group here is going to go to two. Then we're going to have station three, which is the third row, and four, station four. And we are going to time you five minutes. Um, we might not get to share out because of all the time, but we're gonna put all the information, take pictures of all the charts, put it in the slide deck, and um, harness the power of the community here. So we're gonna start the clock. Achievement scores or usage of their growth on the on the um some people like permission to say we deserve to take care of ourselves. I wanna thank everybody for um, participating. I feel like we could probably write a book based on everyone's answers here. Kathy, this could be the start of your next book. Um, Look, this exercise is so engaging. We still have a group and group three just continuing to have those conversations. <laughs> I love it. And well, and so really quick, like my why is kind of different and it goes with what I just saw there is what I would wanna see with my students is that discourse in the classroom and that engagement. High school for me was a huge party. I, it was just a social time. I went to a school of 5,000 kids, so I was smart enough to know how to get lost in the shuffle but still do well. 
Um, that was just my high school experience. But then I went to college and it was actually my professor who really inspired me, Dr. Bennett, who passed away and I, I got to speak at his funeral years ago. But, um, you know, I ended up graduating top of my class from SDSU. I was the chemistry graduate of the, of the year in my class and that's a male dominated field. I was the only female in a room of men. So I've definitely been there in terms of you always gotta be proving yourself sort of mentality, but that's not sustainable. But Dr. Bennett made me go into teaching after being a chemist because I wanted to make sure that no other high schooler had that same experience as me. I wanted, high, I wanted my students to enjoy high school and go on to, you know, have great careers. So I, I and so my why is also in this room personally, is I would, I'm going to take every one of your stories and your faces back with me and make sure I implement everything from this trip, both professionally as a leader at Go Guardian and, and, and personally. So I, I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.